combat. Majority of D&D rules has something to do with combat. And majority of discussions have something to do with combat. Me reading spells and features usually have something to do with combat. I've made hundreds of D&D videos and I can only think of one video where I cover rules that have nothing to do with combat. It's piety. This is a roleplay rule. It's really good. You should put it in your games. Anyways, like 80% of the game has something to do with combat rules. Combat is very constant in Dungeons and Dragons. It usually happens every session or adventuring day. Sometimes there's one or two encounters, that's very common. And sometimes there are eight or more encounters because it's a dungeon crawl. And sometimes there's none. That happens once in a while. But still, out of all the things that can potentially kill your character, combat is the biggest threat. That's the number one killer. That's one of the reasons why people optimize. And there's the fun aspect, of course. Having your beloved character die is scary. But scary things are really exciting, and that's what makes combat fun. But sometimes, combat can be a drag, and that's not fun. And when that happens, Dungeons & Dragons sucks. Because combat sucks, and that's 80% of the game rules. We need to fix that, and both the players and the DM can absolutely come together to solve this problem with a little table optimization with no brews needed. You probably don't even need to change your encounters with these tips. The last tip I will give you in this video is something optimization tables do, and I haven't heard a single content creator talk about it. It makes the game insanely fast, while at the same time enhances role play. Anyways, welcome to Pack Tactics, where we attack people with ads. Woo! Violence! That's right, I rolled my persuasion and I critted with only crits. I use these deadly dice against you. You can get these dice too, but it costs money. Woo! Duckies! Yes, and if you duck, that makes it so you're prone and I have advantage on my melee attacks. Seriously though, only crits have hundreds of different dice sets and all of them are deadly weapons. When you purchase a set, you get a free adventure with the dice so you can test them out. If you don't know what to pick, I recommend getting the Dragon Eye multiple dice set because you get six set of dice in one bag. Actually, I recommend getting two of them if you're a druid planning on casting conjure animals. You can conjure puppies to overwhelm your foes. That's right, puppies are super optimal. No one would hurt a puppy, not even Vecna. Anyways, I highly recommend you check them out and if you do, please press the link in the description. That's onlycrits.com slash gator tactics and if you like what you see, use the code gator for 15% discounts. Bippity boppity boo. Back to the video. First off, DMs, you don't have to brew anything. You don't have to put a timer on your players. I don't recommend timers. Like, even if you're reasonable with it, it just stresses them out, especially if they're not good with AoE spells or made a character on the spot or playing a very advanced character like flagship builds or juggling magic items, poisons, scrolls. There's a million things. D&D is a very easy game, yes. But it's a very big game and people stumble. Stumbling around is completely fine and understandable. Like a marshal with Nova might debate whether they should use poison for even more damage or not. Just let them think or talk to their team. It's fine. What I believe you should do is tell the players about how to approach the initiative order. You can see here that it's my turn. Next is Gator's turn. While I'm taking my turn, Turn, talking to you, the DM. Gator should be planning his next move. He's next up in the initiative. If he plans on casting a fireball after my turn, he can measure his AoE on the map while I take my turn. That's completely fine. But Koobald, you made a square! Ah, the square made you pay attention. Good. Anyways, Gator should be planning when I'm taking my turn. If he wants to talk to me while I take my move, that's completely fine. It's a team game. People should be communicating together in the team game openly. It's the fun part of combat. With a cringe timer, you can't do that. Of course, no one should be controlling other people's characters, but they should be sharing ideas and strategy in the team game. But Koobald, all this planning and talking to each other doesn't speed up combat. <laughs> 
Oh my god, Gator. Here's something you gotta understand. What's more important than speeding up combat itself is actually learning to enjoy combat itself. And if everyone is helping each other and contributing in the team game, then that is fun. You want to keep the fun aspects of combat still intact. Did you know that role-playing slows down combat? Me saying I make an attack is faster than me role-playing. I swing my mighty axe, aiming for my opponent's head. Role-playing in combat is fun, keep it! You don't have to do it every time, but putting some flair once in a while into things is nice. It makes combat fun. If you enjoy combat, then you will naturally learn to enjoy the rules and know how the game works. You'll know how spells and features function and all of that. That will naturally speed up the game significantly and you're playing the game correctly. Kobold, you can't say that! Oh yeah, there's no wrong way to play D&D, my bad. But you know what I mean, you're following the book. Full circle, 80% of the game rules revolves around combat. You need to learn to enjoy it. If you don't, Dungeons and Dragons sucks. That's extremely important to speed up combat. So those two main advices, pay attention to the initiative order and contribute by strategizing with your team to learn to enjoy combat. This should speed up the game naturally at a regular table because eventually everyone gets really good at it. I think most people know this, so we're going to talk about something people don't know about, and this is actually really simple. Optimal Optimization tables have a different approach. They've mastered those two points, but it's not enough for those sort of tables. I'll show you a very extreme case I've experienced. Here's a 27 times deadly encounter, and this was the fifth encounter of the adventuring day. If I remember right, we were level nine. Were we level nine? I, I, I don't remember. Anyways, yes, we did survive. It took us two game sessions. It was like a six hour fight. If we wanted to, we could have made this an hour-long fight. What? How? Usually in a fight, the first and second round are the most important rounds in the entire game and determines who wins or loses. Sometimes it stretches to three or four. In this encounter, because most of them are giants, they have range. But we have the doorway. We can put down a bunch of AoEs and lay down. I'm on my phantom steed. I could just move and take cover. This fight is really not as scary as you think it is because we have the doorway. We have the best positioning. Sometimes even the best positioning determines the whole fight. It's not the case here, but you know. If we lose that doorway, then we lose. Anyways, I don't remember exactly what we did because it was many months ago, but I do remember we surprised them. All of us put down AoEs. Spike growth, spear guardians, hypnotic pattern in the far back where the fire giants are, sickening radiance. That sickening radiance did majority of the work here. Then after all of that set up, we just AoE blasted. Fireballs, binding ice, hypnotic static, and so on. We tackled the situation correctly, but there's so much AoE in the room that it's become a mess with shapes everywhere, and that makes the game turn to a crawl. I really should have taken a picture of all the AoEs to remember where they were. Anyways, most of these enemies at this point can't do anything to us or have disadvantage. It's like the third or fourth round in. That that's where we could have actually ended combat. We decided not to because we've never seen an encounter like that before and wanted to experience it. What do you mean you could have ended? Exactly that. We already won the fight. We're now in the cleanup phase of the fight. You can skip the cleanup phase and then we narrate how we kill all the giants as a team. That skips five hours of combat instantly. This is the best way to speed up combat and it's very simple. It actually boosts roleplay too. What about resources you can potentially lose? Shouldn't you play that out? No, you don't have to. Everyone can come to an agreement like maybe this stretches out for eight rounds. Maybe shave off six or eight more spell slots and maybe lose half your HP. In this fight, I would say that's a very reasonable price to pay to skip the cleanup phase. Like I said before, you want to keep the fun aspects of combat still intact. The cleanup phases are usually boring, so in optimization, they try to skip them. Sometimes you can't do that, but here you absolutely have to. Five hours of cleanup is miserable for everyone. Fights like this burns you out of D&D, and then the game sucks. Remember, keep the fun aspects of combat still intact. Skip fights that are already won in two or four rounds, and progress the game. 
By the way, I don't recommend you throw insane encounters like that, even for optimizers who know what they're doing, and you skip the cleanup phase when they win. It's really not good for anyone. For us, we're very special people. We, of course, had fun, but we should have skipped it. But Kobold, what if I want to challenge my players? Then throw the next encounter, and then another one, and then another one. That's why dungeons are great. You can have many, many, many encounters back to back, and if they squash them easily, well, who cares? They're progressing the game. Reward them. Eventually, they progress the story. Instead of spending five sessions in a dungeon, maybe you have one or two because you are skipping the cleanup phases and you're just playing through the fun stuff. Five sessions is like more than a month for most people. So if you're a player who is bored out of your mind in the cleanup phase, ask the DM if they can skip the encounter. If they question how it works, you just tell them, we as a team narrate how we kill them. The cleanup phase turns into roleplay. People love roleplay, and if they're bored in the fight, they will usually say yes to it. If the DM is bothered by potential resource loss like spell slots and hit points, then all of you can come to an agreement agreement on how much resources everybody loses. This can potentially save hours. There's a branch in optimization who focuses on this sort of stuff heavily. They do everything they can possibly do to cut these boring corners to progress the game faster. That way they get to the fun stuff faster. I've talked about them before, maybe I'll make a full video about them, I don't know. Anyways, end of video. <gasps> Will there be a beach party? I hope so, that would be kinda cool.